Hello and welcome back. I'm here today with my 2021 Tesla Model 3. I'm at an Electrify America DC fast charging station and I have the new Tesla to CCS1 adapter. I drove my car down to zero. We're gonna do a full zero to 100% DC fast charge session on a 350 kilowatt DC fast charger. Now this guy here is rated at 400 amps. So with a 400 volt battery system, you'd expect that we'd be able to max out at about 160 kilowatt. Now I've seen other videos of people peaking at over 200 kilowatt with one of these adapters, but only for a short period of time. We're gonna see if that happens today. We're gonna to map out the whole charging curve, and then I'm gonna compare it to my full zero to 100 charging sessions on a V2 and V3 Tesla supercharger. But first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. In less than a minute, we're pulling 90 kilowatt, and after two minutes, the Electrify America station combined with the CCS1 adapter is killing it. And my Model 3 is taking in 179 kilowatt. For the next six minutes, the charging power gradually climbs up to 185 kilowatt. And in only eight minutes, we're already at 30% state of charge. Now we reach 50% state of charge in only 15 minutes. And that's just awesome. Very few cars can do that and none can do it while using an adapter. It only takes 26 minutes to hit 75% state of charge. And the Electrify America charging station is reporting that it's delivering 66 kilowatt while the car is saying 69 kilowatt. There's also a three kilowatt hour discrepancy in how much power was delivered with the station measuring 55 kilowatt hour and the car saying it took in 52 kilowatt hour. We hit 80% state of charge in 29 minutes, three minutes faster than it took me while charging the car on a Tesla V3 supercharger. After we cross the 80% state of charge point, we're only charging at about 50 kilowatt and it takes eight more minutes to reach 90% state of charge, but still zero to 90% in 37 minutes on an EV that can go roughly 300 miles at highway speeds is fantastic. But this is when any normal person would unplug and move on because the charge rate is really slow once you pass 90%. And it takes me 13 minutes to go from 90% to 99% and does so after charging for 50 minutes. For comparison, it took me nine more minutes to reach 99% on a Tesla V3 supercharger. The car continued to charge for another 32 minutes and stopped charging after 82 minutes as it was gradually balancing all of the cells. But there's one thing that I'm still a little puzzled by. When the screen in the Model 3 reached 100%, it showed that it had accepted 70 kilowatt hour. At that point, the Electrify America screen showed that it had delivered 71.858 kilowatt hour. Now there's nothing strange about that because there's gonna be charging losses on the charging station side that the car may not be able to measure. But as the car continued to accept power, for the next 28 minutes, the Electrify America station shows the power that it's delivering. But the Model 3 does not show that it's adding any more energy and it continues to hold at 70 kilowatt hour accepted while the Electrify America station goes from 71.858 kilowatt hour to 75.135 kilowatt hour, a difference of 3.277 kilowatt hour. And I don't have an answer for that. So this guy did amazingly. I can't believe how great that worked out. We charged to 99% well under an hour. It was faster than my Tesla V3 supercharger recording, which we're gonna get into a little bit later in this video, so you don't wanna leave just yet. Um, you know, for people that do frequent long road trips, I think it'd be a great idea to pick up one of these guys. You know, they're not available through the Tesla website here in North America just yet, but you can buy them online, as I mentioned earlier, from resellers. And you know, if you do a lot of long road trips, it'd be great to have this thing in the car. Tesla superchargers are all over the place. I mean, the best network of high-speed DC fast chargers out there, but they're not everywhere. And with the growing Electrify America DC fast charge network, plus other uh, networks like EVGO, it'd be great to have one of these in your car because now you're in a sense like doubling the amount of places 
that you can go to. And if you can find a 350 kilowatt DC fast charger, well, I mean, you're gonna charge as fast as you do at a Tesla V3 supercharger, so it's awesome. However, most people aren't gonna need this. Most people charge at home daily, and unless they're going on really long road trips, they don't even need public infrastructure. It's something that I think people new to EVs find hard to understand that you're not gonna really need public charging stations if you have the ability to charge at home. Most people are gonna have a level two charging station installed at home and they're gonna plug in daily or every couple of days and you know, every morning you leave with a full tank and you're good to go. And you know, one thing I like to stress is that when you do install your home charging equipment, please hire a licensed qualified electrician. It's really not something that you wanna do yourself, even though I think many people are tempted to do it because it, it on surface doesn't seem that hard, but People don't really understand or know all the new uh, co electrical code, and you just don't want to get yourself in trouble having a problem with it. These things pull a tremendous amount of power for many continuous hours every single day, and one little mistake in the installation could lead to a disaster. So, you know, I highly recommend getting a licensed qualified electrician to install all your electric vehicle charging equipment. It's one of the reasons why I've partnered here with QMerit. Qmerit is North America's leading installer of electric vehicle charging equipment. Now, they also do home energy storage and really any of your home electrification needs, they can help you with that. I have a link to the Qmerit website in the description of this video. They'll offer a free, no hassle estimate for your electric vehicle charging equipment installation. And you know, you don't have to go with them. You could call somebody else, but I always recommend at least have Qmerit come out, give you an estimate, you can decide what you want to do from there. All right, so next up, we're going to take a look at the charging power and time to charge graphs. It's always good to put these charging sessions on paper so you can see how long it took to get to what state of charge and how long it held the high, highest of power. And you could see the whole charging curve on paper. It's it, it, just a better visual than watching that recording that we just saw. Okay, so we're going to watch that next and we'll do a little analyzing. So you can see as soon as we plug in we're taking in 90 kilowatt and it holds that until about the two minute mark when the charge rate quickly climbs up to 179 kilowatt. It then begins this slow climb up to 185 kilowatt at 29% state of charge and that's when the power starts to drop. I always like to look at how long the vehicle charges at 100 kilowatt or more and in this session it held 100 kilowatt until the 57% state of charge point. As you can see here, that's a good chunk of the charging curve. I mean, that's, that's the cheddar right there. We added a lot of miles in that area right there. But even after it drops below 100 kilowatt, it's a nice smooth ramp down, not sharp drops that resemble a staircase as we see with some other EVs. Now this is really a great charging curve. Okay, so now let's take a look at the time to charge chart. One of the things I love to see is, you see here in the beginning how vertical this climb is? That's fantastic. You want to see more of a vertical climb than a horizontal climb, and you get that with the uh, Tesla Model 3, no matter how it's charging and what it's charging on. But it's really impressive that it was able to do that here with the CCS adapter on an Electrify America charging station, in my opinion. This is really a great charging curve. So let's take a quick look at how long it took to get to what state of charge. So after 10 minutes of charging, we're at 37% state of charge from, from zero to 37% in 10 minutes. That's great. After 15 minutes of charging, we're at 50%. 20 minutes later, we're at 64% state of charge. After 25 minutes of charging, we're at 73% state of charge. After a half an hour of charging, we're at 81%. I mean, that, so that's the point where you're going to unplug and leave. Because we're at 80% in a half an hour. That's great for road tripping. And it takes 37 minutes to reach 90% state of charge. Now, you'll notice this flat line along here on the top. That's because after 54 minutes, the charging station and the Tesla Model 3, I think the Model 3 took another minute or so, displayed that it was 100% charged. And that's typical for Teslas. They, they'll hit 100% state of charge, then charge for a while as they balance all those cells out and, and get those final electrons in there. Um, but it charged for 
32 more minutes after saying it was 100% charged. And as I said, it was bouncing all the cells out. And that's why that line is flat there from the 54 minute point all the way up to the 82 minute point. So now let's take a look at the V3 supercharger recording I did last year, zero to 100%, compared side by side to the charge recording I just did with the CCS1 adapter on the Electrify America charging station. Now, as I noted, the EA station beat the Tesla V3 supercharger, which was a shock to me, but that's not telling the whole story. I'm gonna explain a little bit during this section now exactly what happened. And there's one other thing I wanna note that's, I did stop both recordings as soon as the vehicle showed 100% state of charge. I don't continue to show it for the whole time until it stopped charging. That's because when I did the Tesla V3 supercharger recording last year, that's when I ended the recording. When the in-car screen said 100%, I didn't let it continue to charge for the next 20 minutes while it balanced out the cells and just gradually topped everything off. So to be fair, I ended both of the recordings exactly when the screen turned to 100%. Let's take a look. The V3 supercharger jumps out to an early lead as it's pulling the full 250 kilowatt after four minutes, but it only holds 250 kilowatt for about two minutes and begins to ramp down quickly. After seven minutes, it's 3% ahead of the Electrify America station, but now the Electrify America station is delivering more power and begins to catch up. After 10 minutes, both sessions are at 31% state of charge, and now the EA station begins to pull away from the V3 supercharger. But at 41% state of charge, the V3 station is once again delivering more power. However, it's still trailing by about 2% state of charge, as it's at 39%. But is it really trailing? Notice the kilowatt hour added at the bottom right of both screens. Even though the Electrify America station is at a higher state of charge, the car's indicating that the V3 station has added more energy to the vehicle. There's two primary reasons for that. First of all, I did the V3 supercharger recording exactly a year ago. Now my car's a year older and I've had some capacity loss. All electric vehicles have capacity loss, it's inevitable. So charging my battery to 100% today is different than charging it from, to 100% last year. The battery is actually a little smaller. Secondly, when I did the V3 supercharger recording, I had just finished a 70 mile an hour highway range test and I drove it well beyond zero to try to get as many miles as I could for the range test. That wasn't the case here. I probably only drove it about five or six miles beyond zero. So not only does the vehicle have less capacity today, but in the previous test, I used more of the capacity. So quite honestly, a fair way to do this would be for me to do a new V3 supercharge recording sometime very soon, and then compare it to the Electrify America recording we have here. I'm probably gonna set that up within the next week or so. But for now, we have this recording to look at, and as you can see, the Electrify America charging station with the CCS1 adapter finished up nine minutes earlier than the V3 supercharger station did, and the vehicle was saying that it added 70 kilowatt hour compared to 75 kilowatt hour added when I did my V3 supercharger recording. Okay, and finally, I plotted out on my charts the time to charge and full charging curve of the Electrify America with the CCS1 adapter, my Tesla V3 supercharging session, and I also did a complete zero to 100 on a V2 Tesla supercharger. And I put all three of those together on these charts so we could see the difference. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the charging power graph first. The Electrify America charging station with the CCS1 adapter is in blue. The V2 supercharger session is in orange and the V3 supercharger session is indicated in gray. As you can see, the V3 supercharger is killing it in the beginning, pulling 250 kilowatt, but it only does that for a short period of time. And then there's the major thermal throttling all the way down to 140 kilowatt. What's really interesting to me is that the V2 charging session must have also had some serious thermal throttling. That's when the car lowers its optimal charging rate because the battery 
or components used in the charging system are getting too hot from charging. So the car throttles down the charge rate to allow the thermal management system to cool things off. Or it could have been the connector on the supercharger got too hot and the station lowered the charge rate. In any case, this isn't the optimal charging curve here. The charge rate dips way down here, but it should have been able to follow this all the way out to the point where both the CCS1 adapter and the V3 supercharger session start to follow this line downward. It's not actually until the 65% state of charge point that happens and all the three charging sessions are relatively the same until 100%. So now let's check out the time to charge graph. After 15 minutes of charging, the V2 supercharger has my Model 3 up to 40% state of charge. The V3 had it up to 49% state of charge, and the Electrify America charging station had reached 50%. After 30 minutes, the V2 was at 70% state of charge, the V3 was at 77%, and the Electrify America station with the CCS1 adapter had reached 79% state of charge. And after 45 minutes, the V2 was at 88%, the V3 was at 92% and the Electrify America station was at 96%, which is essentially full for all practical purposes. All right, well, that's a wrap on our Tesla V3 supercharger compared to Electrify America charging with the CCS1 Tesla adapter video. I'm surprised that the EA station actually beat the V3 supercharger, but as I mentioned earlier, that doesn't tell the whole story. I'm gonna follow this up by doing a new V3 supercharger, zero to 100% recording this week. So it's within 10 days of doing the CCS1 adapter video. So we have a really good comparison, same battery to same battery. I'm gonna drive it down the same amount that I did when I did this recording. I drove it about five miles after the state of charge read zero. That way we've got really a fair comparison. And then I'll compare these two side by side. We'll see if the EA station is still quicker. I think it's gonna be really close. And one of the things I wanna mention is that we talk about this CCS1 adapter but I didn't mention in this video, I did talked about it in the last video I did on the Tesla adapters. Not all Tesla vehicles can use this. It has to be uh, CCS1 available. And the way you find that out is in the settings of your vehicle. Tesla only started making the cars compatible with these CCS1 adapters sometime around mid 2020 on the Tesla 3 and Model Y. So you have to check in your settings to see if this will even work on your car. Don't buy one until you're sure that your car is CCS1 adapter enabled. All right, well, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Look, if it's your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge.